Welcome to HB Tuner's GM Gen 5 training part 10. In this training module, we're gonna be exploring throttle mass flow, what it means and how it's gonna be fitting into our Gen 5 applications, as well as taking a look at something called P-ratio or pressure ratio and understanding the importance of making sure that the map pressure and the barrow pressure sensors are functioning properly if we're in a force induction type of situation. So we're gonna have a lot to cover and talk about. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our throttle mass flow concept for our GM Gen 5 applications. We need to understand this because if we're going in and trying to dial in a force induction setup that we've added on to a naturally aspirated engine like an LT1, L83, L86 engine, we need to make sure we have some sensors configured in a very specific manner so that we're able to calculate something called pressure ratio or P ratio properly so that everything is gonna fall in line when we're doing our calibrating and we're not gonna get odd throttle control problems or odd torque control problems. It's gonna throw things off if we don't have things right. So I need to first explain what throttle mass flow represents and then explain why these sensors need to be updated and changed when we go from naturally aspirated to force induction. Let's jump in here and take a look. I have a 2016 Camaro SS calibration file open. I'm gonna use that as my point of reference here for the beginning of the tutorial we're gonna go and take a look at some earlier, so 2014, 2015 model year calibration file. I'm gonna reference that as well after I've gone through some of the details here for throttle mass flow because some of the choices are a little bit different in terms of what we can, uh, we can select and program. Although the concept of what I'm gonna be describing here is going to be the same, whether it's an earlier Gen 5 or a later model year Gen 5, so 2016 and on. Okay, so let's jump in here. I wanna take a look at a point of reference in the calibration file specific to throttle mass flow and then some areas of interest that we need to, to talk about and discuss that we might need to update and change depending on what kind of application we have, naturally aspirated or force induction. Let's go in here to engine and then under engine, we'll move from general into airflow and then from airflow, we're gonna focus here in our general tab under this area here, map and all the values below. So we need to go and focus and in this area, we're also gonna be taking a look at and talking about under the electric throttle here, Throttle area limits the max area. That's also another important parameter. This is going to tell the engine control module what amount of surface area the throttle plate is covering so that if it's trying to figure out how much to open it, it can do that in the throttle mass flow calculations properly. Let's jump back under general and let's discuss this a little bit further. Now under the map here, we find a sensor config option. Right now in our drop down, we have a bunch of different choices, but it's now selected on NA-TIAP or throttle inlet air pressure sensor. Now, the way this is going to work in our throttle mass flow calculation, we'll find that we need to understand what is coming into the throttle body and then what's coming out of the throttle body in order to control the throttle body right. In order to know what's coming out of the throttle body, well, we have a map pressure sensor mounted right on the intake manifold. In order to understand what's coming into the throttle body, we need to have a point of reference there as well. And within the mass airflow sensor, we'll have a barrow pressure circuit. Now the barrel pressure is gonna tell the engine control module what the atmospheric pressure is going to be. So if we change elevations, it'll change the barrel pressure sensor. Fueling and spark timing calculations can be affected by it. And we need to have the barrel pressure reference because it will affect the density of the air. So that's a basic input that we always have coming into the engine control module. Now within this torque based system on a Gen 5, GM has taken things a little bit further. They're actually gonna be able to calculate the inlet pressure to the throttle body and then again, we'd know the outlet pressure based on the map pressure sensor, measuring the manifold air pressure, whether it's going to be positive, going higher than atmospheric, so going above 100 kPa or zero PSI, or if we're in vacuum conditions as we're driving. Now, we're gonna find that by knowing the inlet pressure and knowing the outlet pressure, if we wanna go and reach a desired mass airflow amount or a desired map pressure, then we would know how much throttle angle we need to open that throttle plate by. And we need to know what the surface area of the throttle plate is going to be, which comes into play right here. So we need to know how large of a throttle plate we're trying to control. Bigger throttle plates need less throttle angle movement to achieve a desired mass airflow and desired map pressure through that throttle body. So we're gonna find that this is gonna be key if you change out to a larger than stock throttle body. We need to go in and translate that here for the max area. Now I provide it in a repository function, the ability to import the, jump in here real quick, let's go to edit, template applicator, 
and then we can go here to file open, open template, tune template. In our Gen 5 training course under the template applicator, uh, right here I have the 01 LT5 throttle body, which is a popular upgrade to the drop-in throttle body, larger than stock. We'd need to go and just click open here, that'll plug in the value for that specific throttle body here for the max area. If we're changing out the throttle body, this has to be updated because again, it needs to transcribe that surface area, how much, how much air potential that throttle plate can move related to its size, and then how much mass airflow and map pressure movement we're gonna get as that throttle plate moves. So that's the, the movement of the throttle plate would be in transcribed. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.